Hi, and welcome to The Final Wake Up. I'm your host, Madison Palika, holistic health coach, certified HeartMath mentor, published author of a number one Amazon new release, and creator of eBooks and courses that help you become the best you possible. I am passionate about bringing light to a world full of darkness and confusion. After becoming deathly ill, as well as severely anxious, and having doctors give me no solutions, I had to find my own way to health. I was mind blown by the things that I was finding. And I became obsessed with helping other people find health and happiness outside of the system too. I'm here to help you become happy and empowered so that you can also live a life full of meaning. You will love the final wake up if you're ready to dodge the traps that this world has set for you. If you want more, you can head to my Instagram page at madison.polika. Join my club at the link in my bio to be the first one to know about sales, product launches, life updates, and to get early access and discounts. And now on to today's episode. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. I was just, I was going through my old accounts. So I'm like pulling up a bunch of stuff. When now I'm like everything, everything set out. So it's like proper and it's like, okay, boom, just like that. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> <How are you? laughs> when you say old account, is this not the yeah it's a long story it's a long story so yeah this um the main one i have um i started that one after this other previous one i had on private so i was like posting random but then this one is when i really like edited and put things more into context and quality but then the previous one was just me posting and posting is it's gonna be a whole lot (laughs) but yeah yeah (laughs) okay awesome well it sounds like you're prepared i'm excited yep and to make sure I'm saying it right, is it Zavosity? Yep, you got it right. Okay, yes. Yeah. So today I'm recording with Zavosity. It was Zavosity Theosis. Yeah, I did. I noticed I cha- yeah, that you I went through it. a name change. So yeah. we'll definitely talk <laughs> about that. But yeah, I guess before we dive into it, just give us your little background. Like, what's your name? Where are you from? How did you get started in kind of your line of work? It's very... Um, <laughs> It's very unique, like the way that you edit things and put all the information together. I've always really liked it. Apparently, other people do, too, because you have what, like mm. almost 17,000 followers or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, from the start. So right now I born and raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So from the start of like having this account, like I was here when the whole riots went out, when it was like the lockdowns, when I was so like really on this journey of like really seeing what the world for what it was but this actually started way before when i was like 13 years old and to give more context as to like what i know it's going to tie into like you know somewhat part of my testimony but um around 13 i was an internet kid i was just going through youtube and whatnot and um i fell upon this youtube channel called april wayne studios and this is like 2000 like nine years ago and what she was doing she was exposing like a lot of the symbolism within hollywood like michael jackson like the beatles like certain like movements that you would do and i was like huh this is very interesting and i just did not know it at the time so meanwhile i'm 13 i'm looking at this youtube video and i'm already like pierced with like so much fear and i'm like oh my gosh where's like all this stuff and i started to see like the 666 symbols i started to see like the checkerboard floor i started to see wow. um, certain songs like um i think that really captivated me when they kept like just mocking Jesus Christ so many times. And this is when like my eyes started to get like really seeing the truth for what it was. So when she starts to like bring up like um, even certain movements, we already know about the advancement into transhumanism. We start to see like a lot of, you know, of course, satanic worship being like now it's just blatantly obvious and no one really cares about it as much. But like prior to that, back in 2013, um, that's when I, had that seed sown at the time but i did not commit myself to jesus christ until 2020 so going through like elementary school high school and like i said i was only 13 at the time i was like telling my friends and i don't know why like i was like telling my (laughs) friends your favorite artist is um you know they worship the devil you know checker floor you know six 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 like they're like what the heck are you talking about right and then i was like how do you guys not see this so literally me in class this is like eighth grade right (laughs) And like we're all we're all sitting together. And I'm like, well, guys, did you know that um Disney has 
Walt Disney has 666 in it. And they're like, dude, like, what are you even talking like, about? You're crazy. Right? So, like, at the time, like, I was very, very drawn to, like, really looking deep within, like, a lot of just the darkness of this world. So it just started off with Hollywood specifically, then specific celebrities. And then what is it? Walt Disney, for instance. So I started to see a lot of symbolism. And then I started to see a pattern between every single artist as I was growing up in that age of, like, I think, I think it was like 20. I was 12 in 2015. Yeah, 2015 to around, yeah, 2020 in that mixture. So, yeah, it's been like um growing all the way up until high school. But like I said, in 2020, that's when I fully committed myself to Jesus Christ. And that's when everything starts to get put together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because I feel like I kind of had something similar mm-hmm. where I remember in middle school starting to watch videos about the Illuminati like me and my friends, we just thought it was like a scary story. So we would watch the videos about like Beyonce and Jay-Z doing like mm. these symbols. Yes. But I yeah. feel like you definitely had a different reaction because for me, it was like, oh, that's crazy. Definitely yeah. not true. But then me and my right. friends started like doing the symbols and pictures and mm-hmm. like thinking it was funny. So it's funny that both of us did kind of get onto like the YouTube videos at yep. a really young age, but... Yeah, you yeah, clearly like, took it more seriously than <laughs> yeah, I did. Like, I mean, like, even down to the shows, like, I did mention Disney. There was this one show called Gravity Falls that really put things into um perspective for me. And it was, like, this weird character called Bill Cipher, Um, because I'm, I'm a nerd, you know? Like, I know, like, <laughs> I like to go into all the cartoons and stuff. But, like, it mm-hmm. was, um, the pattern kept showing for itself. And just, like, those small things about, you know, um, I know there was, like, one episode where he was talking to one of the uncles and he was alluding to like i'll give you all the riches of this world i'll give you a whole universe your own galaxy and like the guy was like a pyramid and this may talk into our discussion later but i remember there was one line he says like the universe is a hologram everything yada yada but i did not understand that because like at the time i was thinking like oh maybe this guy's actually exposing like the darkness but i didn't realize he was in the gnostic ideology and i was like huh why would you put this in the show like adventure time um regular show it was like (laughs) <laughs> it started to kick in a lot so um yeah so yeah with all the symbolism and also you remember the vine compilation in 2014 when it was like illuminati confirmed and all this stuff i don't know i i might yeah. like if i saw something <laughs> but it's been a while since vine yeah I, yeah so yeah growing up with like just the internet and all that stuff i was like wow this is captivating it was just it was a seed that was sown yeah for sure and so you went on to be so you were saved in 2020 yep. and you were saying that you were there during like all the george floyd riots yep. and stuff yeah what like what was your perspective from before you were saved and what was it that mm. finally did it for you that you were like okay i think yep. that jesus christ is the answer right amen yeah so like um what happened so like trying to connect every because it's like such a long timeline so yeah from when i was 13 i did not mention this too but um i was in minneapolis i was working at a store and then i was working at like um, a place called juxtaposition they did graphic design and stuff cool. and then occasionally one time there was this guy on the street corner passing out bibles and i'll show you this one this is like my very first one that he gave me right wow. and i was working and then yeah my parents dropped me off and i made the excuse to go run to the bathroom but i didn't go to use the bathroom i went to there and i got the bible and that's when um all those videos from when i was watching connected together so i was actually starting to read it but then like i said over elementary school 2019 i was just living for the world i was posting my own crazy interview youtube videos in high school and stuff but i knew deep down i was like why was i doing this so during 2019 um 2020 me and my friend david were getting super connected and he and i are still best friends to this day but he was very the first person that really um we took like the lord seriously and we started to let's i'm gonna say it, we started to go visit different freemason lodges throughout our entire city and we were like what the heck like because this is okay this is in south of us high school you could look it up on google but south of us high school there was a freemasonic lodge not too far 
and we looked at it and we went inside to talk to them and whatnot and then there was another one called the scottish right freemasonry like and i was like how does no one see this at all so now all this connecting he and i were like starting to read the book of revelation without even reading the rest of the bible we was like oh my gosh it's the end times the world's coming to an end <laughs> yeah kanye west just dropped jesus is king oh what if he's coming to it was just yep. super chaotic so then 2020 came around I was in junior um year of high school. Everyone kind of knew I was like, you know, the conspiracy dude. Like I was posting on my stories. Love Some it. of the girls in class were like, what the like, what the heck are you posting? Like, are you serious? Come on now. <laughs> you can't be that crazy. And then um we were all coming back home for winter break. And that's when COVID started to take a task, right? So during that time, like I said, between 2019 and 2020, David and I started watching like a lot of Instagram accounts like Hollywood Weird, who is not there anymore. Truth Unedited, who's still around. I think AOC Network was another Christian. We just started to see a lot of these um things come to be. And then we were like very lammered by it. But then COVID-19, everyone was locked down. Everyone was shut out from society. No one talked to each other. Everyone from my high school would just didn't really socialize. And mm-hmm. nothing is a coincidence because I was literally living, because I live in two separate households. So my dad was living on close to the street where George Floyd was killed and all the riots were taking place right there while I was living like a few blocks prior all the way up there in the uptown area where none of that was happening. In 2020, I started to delve deeper into reading my Bible. I thought the ta 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 was the mark of the beast. So I'm like in a panic zone, right? I was thinking like, <laughs> well... Then this Pizzagate scandal comes out and it's like all these Hollywood people are getting exposed around Jeffrey Epstein's island. Isaac Caffey, who was yeah. um, rest in peace, who was exposing like a lot of this stuff. And I was like, wow. And I'm like, you know what? Um, then I started to watch Truth Unedited. And then the Bible started to speak more and more um, to me as I was like literally studying it for myself. But then I did not know really what was the concepts of repentance or, you know, giving your life to Jesus. I always had that Jesus prayer when I was 13. So I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm protected. I'm OK. I mean, I'm going to read my Bible at, uh, at lunch. But no one I, I was kind of scared if someone was going to say something. But then 2020, that's when, you know, I, I said, Lord, I, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. And then from that moment on, it was like in an old house we don't live there anymore but my mom and i we actually moved over so when i was there um i repented and i truly had that born again experience and i could reflect on who i used to be my characteristics started to change the things i started to say started to change the people i wanted to hang out i did not want to hang out no more the content <laughs> the words everything started to change for me and that's when i started posting more and let's just say i lost a whole lot of friends <laughs> like, oh, yeah, i'm sure yeah but i know that was a lot that i said but yeah yeah that's like how it happened so yeah it was like you were kind of on like almost on the jesus train for a while yeah but didn't quite take it super seriously no no no, no what like, like what just, was yeah. it that switched for you like why did you finally decide I'm going to take this more seriously? Was it just because everything started tying together or? I think both, but also reflecting on my personal life and trying to find a solution to fill this void within because that it was 2019 and I kind of broke up with somebody and I was kind of getting tied into like, you know, living a lifestyle that was not good whatsoever. And it was, now that I remember, it was just like, me piecing together on like what I've learned and what I studied and how like um Jesus Christ like constantly as I was researching was being exposed and all this stuff and it was just like seeing for what the world was and how Christ is like the enemy like of it I was like there must be something very 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 precious about him mm. so then when I was like reflecting on my life and like all the things I've seen all the things I've heard and like you know the way I was living, like I wanted to feel something within, but I did not know how to fill it up. So when that moment, when like I had to like turn off all the lights, I was just quiet in my room and with just little faith I had, I was like, you know what, let's just see if this works. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's when like I repented at that moment. And then from that moment, like I've never changed ever since and then he just started to reveal more and more to me but yes on top of like everything i've learned 
it was with also that seed that was sown into me like when I was 13 when I was <laughs> starting off on my journey yeah yeah that is crazy just the impact of the internet on people like because even for me yeah I still think of how like I didn't think that that was so impactful for me to see those Illuminati videos when I was younger because it's like yeah. I just thought it was like some crazy thing and we listened to it like a scary story and we'd all get like spooked and it was kind of fun. But mm -hmm. then now, like so many years later, thinking that that's very, very prominent in my life and in the world. And like, like props to the people who are making those videos way back. Then. Right. Like what must they have gone through? Yeah. To start to realize those things themselves, because like we will see 20 videos a day about it. Mm -hmm. and, but for them, like, they were the pioneers, I feel like. That's... So yeah. It, it was just like, because even um with that first channel I mentioned with April Wayne Studios, when she was exposing all this, she always ended her videos with the gospel and, like, exposing your sin and, like, you know, and I was like, wait, 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 hold on. How does this... Like, because I, I could see how they're mocking Christ, but when it came to this, I'm not going to lie to you, that was more scarier than seeing the Illuminati stuff. <laughs> really? So I was like, oh, snap, like, I'm not a good person <laughs> it was cool. perfectly done how she did it but she always came back to bring jesus back to the conversation it was mm -hmm. always a solution so like not to transition too far to um the question but i know within 2020 a lot of things were happening people were coming out of the new age movement but there was also this weird um idea of awakening and we're trying to like you know become our own gods it was like a lot of kids in my age they were on tiktok they were saying like you are god the bible is this jesus is just a metaphor he's just a son i'm like yeah mm, no and that's when i fell upon stephen barnaker's and his testimony i was like bank cars right good. yes so good <laughs> but yeah yeah because i was one of those people in the new age and same thing in 2020 all this crazy stuff started going on but I, in New Age, was still thinking that, like, I'm going to bring heaven to earth and, like, yeah. we're all going to transcend into the 5D, blah, blah, blah. And I was really into, like, the Great Awakening and the Q PSYOP. And I mm -hmm. was super into oh, that stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay, go on. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, with the whole Q, yeah, with the whole um Q, Q and on thing, I'm not going to lie to you. So, with the whole Pizzagate um, thing coming to being, and then like I started to really see like how sinister things were, like certain cases like John Podesta, and like I started to learn more about like Aleister Crowley. Then I started to learn more about um, a lot of the different terms and whatnot these people would do, or like also the whole human trafficking junk. So, I got this one book right here. It was um, this one that exposed like a lot of it. I forgot her name. I think her name was I something on Instagram, but she had like a whole highlight of the books. But this ties into like some of the things that were happening. So when QAnon was really relevant, I did not know what it was. They started to post the exact same thing. And then when the summer of 2020 came to an end, there was this one Netflix um, show or movie that called Social Dilemma. And that movie was trying to say, oh, no. Let's say the true truthers, all right? Not the QAnon ones, the ones that actually, let's say straight to the point, that believed in Jesus Christ, who are actually exposing the truth for itself. They compiled it all together like, Pizza Gay is not real. Mm -hmm. Epstein, these people are crazy. The whole thing is just like, yada, yada, yada. And then I didn't realize like the whole rise of this was like so part of like, you know, this political thing of like, either you're on the right or you're on the left. And if you're on the right, you're queuing on, you're with Trump, you're trying to rise with him. Trump is like the Messiah like figure. I did not fall for that. Cause I was like, um, no, the Bible doesn't say that right. <laughs> he's not our savior. Christ is. And then I was like, huh, that was interesting. But that actually came in 2021 when the, um, I think, was it the Capitol or was it the, um, was it, that got attacked on january the january 6th thing at the capitol yep yeah yep yep so then when that happened i was like oh, okay i get it this is not our fight i see what's happening so putting everything in the bunch together to bring into this like black and white paradigm and if you're on this side and you're on that side so yeah that's when like q and i start to really realize that and that's when i forgot her name um probably alexandra her youtube channel she yeah, talked about more good. in depth and i was like oh I'm not on either side. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. with the Lord. <laughs> that took me a while 
to get used to because I feel like I don't know if I'm just naive or what, but like I feel yeah. like I fell for almost everything. Like at the beginning of COVID, I was really sick, not with COVID, mm-hmm. just with my own health issues. Yeah. And so I would like turn on the news and I would see the death counts. And I really thought like, oh, if I get this, I'm going to die because I have like pre-existing stuff. So I was all scared and it took me a while to realize, okay, I don't think that this is actually real. And then once Mm -hmm. I realized that wasn't real, I got super into the Q stuff and then I was super into the Trump stuff. And so, yeah, I feel like I kind of got like led along into all these things. Um, And it took me a while to kind of like deconstruct those newer beliefs too. Mm Because I like I was wearing a Trump mask and all this stuff. Mm hmm. And but it's also interesting to me. Did you ever watch the documentary Out of Shadows? No, I haven't. Actually, what's explain more about like Out of Shadows? So it was this documentary by a woman named Liz Crokin, and it was mm-hmm. basically like exposing the deep state and talking about like Satanism and like the I think the yeah. child trafficking stuff. It's been a while since I watched it. But it like really exposes everything. And yeah. I feel like it has like a Christian undertone. And that was part of what yeah. like made me start thinking about Jesus. But it's really interesting to me mm-hmm. the way that the right and like the whole Republican, like conservative platform has gone yeah. super Christian. Yeah. Because I feel like it was because of their pro- political propaganda that maybe a lot of people ended up getting saved, which is so weird to me. Yep. And now, like, looking at it from the perspective I have now, I'm just thinking, like, how are they utilizing that to, like, control people? Mm-hmm. And I feel like they are, like, with the whole Trump messiah yep. thing stuff. Then him, like, bringing, like, you know, let's just say a quote-unquote great awakening like the like the power falls into the people like you guys are your own saviors your Mm self-salvation and whatnot yeah Yeah, no that's yeah that all ties together because like even with the um because i knew like around that time i think it was on bit shoots or like um odyssey when i fell upon this other pizzagate documentary it was by the title of this guy named buddha something and then he was just going in depth about exposing like you know the um certain like types of foods that would like indicate to a specific like child or infant and whatnot and like how they all correspond and connected together and then like i think probably alexandra's video on like that it was in 2020 when she exposed like thoroughly through all that stuff helped me see it through like a christian lens as well rather than you know how the right was like taking on it all you get what i'm saying like they were mm-hmm. like yeah drifting it more to like the political side so then you know it's falling under this paradigm of like yeah back and forth so yeah that's when um really seeing that and also i think there was this other book by jay dyer it was um the esoteric hollywood right here okay and yeah going in depth within all those movies how they had those connections of pizzagate before that came about in 2020 or you know 2016 when the guy supposedly went inside and tried to save those kids out like the restaurant like <laughs> there's there's just like so many connections because i remember also watching um toy story when they went to um pizza planet and they uh, were like connecting all of this like stuff and like the number of a a i think it was a 13 it was a 13 or a 11 13 something and it was like oh adrenochrome adrenochrome adren-. i was like huh you guys are slick <laughs> in the kids movies too of course yeah, they the get them while they're young like, it was like the monster Inc movie. Um, I remember that. And then that's when I started to really figure out, I know this may like drift off somewhere else, but I remember I was really, when I started to read the Bible more and more in 2020, I learned more about the Nephilim and the giants. And then it started to go way further back. And I was like, huh, like this stuff is extremely ancient. Like the whole drinking blood to be youthful and stuff. And I have like a lot of (laughs) other books and stuff. And, Let's be honest. One thing I did not like was, you know, the History Channel, Ancient Aliens. They try to incorporate their own sort of sort of truth with the truth. So it was at the time when I got this book, The Giants of America, then another book of the Genesis 6 conspiracy that tied a lot of things together. And I was like, oh, snap, like, huh, this is interesting. (laughs) (laughs) 
You read yeah. a lot of books, but you're in school too, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm in school, but I, I knew this is all going to pay off like over time. Like I know what the Lord is like, you know, get all the information in hand so that, you know, it won't be on a drive on the file and it disappears. Cause I just noticed like yeah. that might tie in later to what we're going to talk about. But yeah. Okay. So you're gathering all of this information. When did you start posting with Zavosity Theosis? Good point. So I started posting in, I'd say the fall of 2020. And during that time, the editing was kind of a little off because it was like only like 60 seconds. And I was taking like audio clips from specific people like John Todd, who I'm going to talk about, who was like part of a royal family, but he came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Six of his tapes are there. And I have um his book is called Beyond the Legend by John Todd. And his story is very deep how he was in witchcraft. And he was a I think I don't know if he was a 30 second Freemason or 33rd Freemason. But I was like using a lot of clips from different like people who were exposing things. But then I just kind of knew like I could have gone more in depth. So when I started to like piece together, like, okay, let me expose Freemasonry in like 10 slides. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Pack it up. And then I started to watch more of like, let's say the Marvel movies. And I think when the Eternals came out and I was diving into like the Genesis 6 thing of like them coming down, teaching mankindness i started to really piece things together for people to understand it's so simple and get it straight to the point especially with my generation with making the edit similar to see what they see commonly like oh tiktok did you know like the algorithms trying to keep you trapped and yada yada trying mm -hmm. to <laughs> stimulate your mind or like tinder it's like you know it's not what i try to make things extremely simple so then people may be like okay i see what this is for what it is and then it's like ah uh, that makes sense so mm -hmm. yeah, it was really in 2020. And then I think also there was this was this goofy thing that happened in December when everyone thought they were gonna get superpowers. Do, do you remember that in December of 2020? Where it was so no. it's a weird thing. So it was like a solar ascension thing. So they okay. thought on like either December 9th or December 19th, and it was just a bunch of like, you know, kids who had like dreadlocks, they had the jewelry, they were like taking a lot of things from like what's his name, Manly P. Hall, who thought about Christ okay. consciousness. And then yep. similar at the time, I was <laughs> looking to Steve Barnaker's. But yeah, around that time, I was just like, no, this is wrong. This is bad. No, nah, this is coming from the Tower of Babel. So but over time, I started to like think more or less on like, you know, quantity as how many can I post, but then the quality. So it just I kind of put it more simple. OK. And also um, the name. Well, first, where does the Instagram name come from? Like, what is Zavosity? Oh. <laughs> Good question. That was the <laughs> name I used in high school because formerly I used to be a YouTuber doing crazy interview pranks with people. Okay. And before, okay, before 2017, I was a freshman in high school. Everyone was using the word Lil. There was like Lil Peep, Lil <laughs> Uzi Vert, Lil Pump. Lil, it was like all these, yeah, all these people were lost, right? And I was like, huh, what if I made a name called Lil Avo? So before the Zavosity part, it was just Avo. And I was like, okay. oh, that kind of sounds a little childish. So then um, I decided to put the Zavasi thing. I want to sound cool. I wanted attention in high school. I was that type of kid. But then, like I said, during 2020, when I stopped posting YouTube videos on my former channel in high school, I started to use that on my main account. But before that account that I use now, I was posting just my personal life. So I use that name throughout. But it, it doesn't really have a meaning, but it's like it. It used to be something that it's not anymore. So now it's like, that's just the title I use. And then mm -hmm. anyone looks it up. That's where I just do my thing. <laughs> okay. And then my second mm -hmm. question going off of that is the theosis part. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want you to explain a little bit more about like what that means, because I feel mm -hmm. like some people see that and might think that theosis means like means... becoming a God. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, wait, but if he's Christian and you don't become a God, like, huh, so yeah. Yeah, if you could just yeah. explain a little bit, like, what actually does theosis mean? Yeah, so, like, when it came to, like, theosis, this is why, like, I took a long break. I was trying to do it the opposite of apotheosis. Like I said, I had to take a break. I was trying to figure out, like, a lot of things in my personal life and get my faith right back together. But um, with apotheosis, it was, like, the aspiration to becoming God, and theosis is to be one with God through Jesus Christ. But mm -hmm. I was going to like do a whole confusing face. So I was like, you know what? Let me just change it to logos, the word. 
and that's just it so i want to like be against the whole ideology of that we are our own gods in our own right we are enlightened we don't need a savior we can you know reach the heights of heavens we can be our own nimrods our own lucifers and i was like Mm -hmm. nah so i had to change it but i was trying to make like a little cooler and whatnot but yeah it was opposing the apotheosis idea that mankind like okay no actually a better sentence either man created god or god created man and i wanted to go against the idea that man created god so then Mm -hmm. i put theosis right there but it comes from like this orthodox understanding of like you know union with god through christ but I had, right. to, I had to change it so it doesn't cause more confusion. Hopefully okay. that made a lot of sense. <laughs> Anna, I noticed too that you haven't posted on that account since what, like April? Yes. So <laughs> why, like what prompted you to kind of go on that hiatus and what have you been doing in the meantime? Yeah, I think so what had happened when I took that break, I really had to focus on my relationship with Christ and I was really um, starting to drift off a bit because I was studying so much of like what to expose next. What's the next big controversy? What's this, that, and the third. But personally, in my own life, I wasn't really like growing and I did not, you know, spend more time like in his word or spend more time praying. And it was just me just doing it just to do it and expose it so I can catch up with the algorithm of others. And then I really had to take a break on like understanding like, okay, going back there's a verse in revelation about you know you did all these good things but you forgot your first love so like like going back to him i had to really start from the foundation as to why i'm even doing this so i had to take a break in the midst of that time i was getting done with school i was doing it doing an internship and i was like fellowshipping more because during that time i was like isolated by myself like i didn't really want to associate with anybody but i really had to like you know start all over and then come back now with more and more wisdom rather than just you know spewing just knowledge 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 because then i could get prideful on my own i never want to ever be that because <laughs> i'm nobody but yeah I, like i really need to go back to um christ in that time period and it, it was worth it and so now you're on my podcast mm-hmm. do you think you're gonna start posting again or like why do you feel like you kind of came out of that hole like why are you coming out now and what are mm. kind of your plans i think now is just because it's a good time after going to see like a whole bunch of movies and i was like sitting in the bag and i was like wondering how can i um like put things together and then when it came to editing it was just like all pixelating in my head and i just knew this was something like i'm called to do and i just i really needed that break and now I'm going to try to pull in things, let's just say not something like controversial, but like something that really exposes everything very simple. So like I said, prior to like not doing things like so much like quantity over like quality over quantity. So every time I'll just post things with quality. Yeah, just like I knew this as well as called to do. And also it just has to be done. And I enjoy doing what I have to do, but I just know it helps someone else who like does not know about it and brings them more closer to Christ. So, right. Yeah. yeah maybe mm-hmm. you'll be the videos for someone who's just a little 13. Year <laughs> yeah. Old and yeah. They'll yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Hey. They'll start talking to their yeah. friends about giants and <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah. Even with this account, I was able to meet a lot of people from different states and met new friends. And it was very, like very fruitful. And the beautiful thing is I met, um, I'm, I'm going to say his name, Sam. He was in high school. So my friend David and I, who I just brought up, we're both in college and like Sam just graduated out of high school. But even for him, he came upon the account I use and he was just so blown away by it. And then at first he was like, okay, yeah, let's talk about, but it was like, okay, what do you, what's your relationship with Christ first? Let's, let, let's see what it is. You gotta like take it step by step. Just like, you know, take it bits by bits. And then you see the whole part of it. So, you know, yeah, that can help out someone who like was in the same position as I am. And then, yeah, it's been a crazy experience. So meeting new people, meeting um other people who do the same thing and like we're working together and it's just beautiful. So I think it just needs to be done. And now everything's like all. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, clearly you have a lot going on in your head. What do you feel like you're going to start to tackle the very first? Like, do you feel called to a very certain topic to? Yeah, I think moreover, like what is like, 
mainly where the next agenda is going to happen. Um, how does this connect to biblical pros- prophecy? How does this connect to the Bible and how it always stands firm, like Christ is the truth and the life every single time. And I think there's been something that's been repeating over and over since like, I think of last April in 2022, when I first posted that video of the two um, directions when it comes to the Garden of Eden, it's like the main one that's pinned. But Mm -hmm. it's always this idea that we are our own gods. And I can consistently see it through a lot of movies, music videos, no matter what, like the self-improvement, red pill, escape the matrix type thing. It's like you're becoming your own God or like the prosperity gospel. It's like, you know, it's like another form of um, what's that one thing? It was like Deepak Chopra and um, Oprah that said this like manifestation or something, the law of attraction. Yeah, it just like I tag those avenues and always explain like this is not old this is not new this is from the garden of eden it's the same lie that satan told adam and eve that you should become gods and i see it over and over again so i think the direction is like whatever um that what the bible already said i always bring it back to it and i'm like yeah guys this is nothing new man like come like <laughs> god been saying this from the beginning so yeah i think that's why i've been um tackling a lot but yeah, I think it that's is, a It's so interesting. Like it's such an old play and it just mm-hmm. keeps getting played every single time. Like you think that there would be some new better idea, but every time what like no matter what fake religion or like spiritual movement or anything, it's always that same idea of like you can become your own god. Mm-hmm. And like how do people not start to see through that of like oh, this is the same promise that's always been promised like it's Mm -hmm. literally nothing new it's the same old thing every single time yeah i think it like also plays on like you know the pride of the human heart and then them just like already you know they don't know like they don't know god at all so like in their eyes they already think that they're good and they think like you know they don't need of a savior so hearing that message is like drinking it like it's water it's like okay yeah common self me 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 my will my desires i'm the king of my own universe i manifest my own reality i i i i i and it's like when you come to christ it's like no deny yourself (laughs) you are not god it's not know thyself it's deny thyself so it's like oh crap and that's what every like mystery religion and occult practices is like you know you become your own god you ascend you're no different than your father the devil pretty much so it's like yeah that same thing so it has nothing new. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Zoom is a sore loser. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry about that. No, you're good. You're good. Um, for our listeners, we were talking a little bit and Zoom kicked us off, but we were talking about Stephen Bancars and his book, The Second Coming of the New Age. And I was telling the story about how I watched one of his videos when I was in the New Age. And he was talking about how he made all this money doing spirit science. Uh, just from like ads on YouTube and stuff. And he got this nice house and these nice cars. And I thought it was awesome because that was what I wanted. And at the end of the video, he started saying that it never brought Mm -hmm. him any peace, never brought him joy, and that he ended up finding his joy in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my first wow moments of like, wait a second, you can get all of this stuff and not actually be happy and so i didn't like it but i was intrigued by it so i kept listening to this new age coach who shared his video and then i looked into some of his stuff and that's kind of how i started getting my like little tiptoes into christianity because i i definitely thought that christianity was like the problem like this evil just like yep Yeah, I thought it was like the root of the patriarchy and all of the evil stuff going on. Mm -hmm. But I did believe in like Christ consciousness and that maybe Jesus was like a prophet or an ascended master. A mystic or like, (laughs) yeah, Yeah, like, or an ascended master. So like, even when it came to like, um, yeah, him, when he dove into like the ideas of Christ consciousness and certain verses, like a lot of people within the new age would take out a context or like, you know, the kingdom of God is like within you. I was like, <laughs> yes. Luke, it was like Luke. Um, it was, I think it was Luke 10 34 or Luke, no Luke 17, 21. It was Luke 17, 21. It was like the kingdom of God was, is within you. And then when I really start to like, see how, um, no, that's putting the context right there. 
or like Psalms 82 6 where it says ye are gods but then if you just read a little bit more it says then like men you shall die and it was like okay um so then that's when at the time um I think it was roughly around 2020 when I learned about zeitgeist for the first time about this idea that Jesus was just another metaphor of the sun god deities and which is not true but then um realizing like how they kept trying to preach this idea of christ consciousness and um how it's actually not true so then when i start to realize like you know the whole um idea like christ is the beginning and the last and that within the old testament it talks about not worshiping the sun or the moon or the plants or the stars and whatnot so i'm like well if christ says to not worship these things and he's the one that created the heavens and the earth and things that are visible and and invisible how could you say he's a metaphor of the sun and then mm-hmm. that's when I start to like really connect the dots. And that's when I start to distinguish between the real truthers and the Gnostic truthers. And the Gnostic truthers had this idea like, you know, things like the prison planet. And I think you talked about um David Icke um, yes. on your Instagram. And I'm glad I did not fall into that. But um it was just interesting because even what's his name? There's another guy that went to the Bohemian Grove. Um, oh, was... oh, oh, why can't I not think of I his, his name? name? But Ooh. yeah, he... It was some. It was just like you guys are on a prison planet. Christ is just a mystic. <laughs> the Nagamati um, the Nag scriptures, you know, you have to destroy the beast, kill the beast. It was. Just, it was just yes. like I forgot. Yeah, I, I remember that. So then when I start to like distinguish between um, and if it weren't for um Stephen Bancar's like book about exposing that like idea that Christ consciousness is actually not what it says, and it's not that you are the kingdom of God's within you is for the believer who has the Holy Spirit, and then. When I started to see that, I was like, ah, oh, this made sense. So then um, I know I have a lot, a lot of list of people, but then there was people like John Todd, William Copper, Fritz Springmeyer, okay, Rob Steva, yeah, um, Stephen Darby. Um, there's this other guy named Alantian Childs. This was like in 20. 20- you remember that five hour video? Yes. yes that yes, video so- definitely changed my life yeah yep so like when i I was (laughs) the funny thing was i was literally in my i think either science class watching that because covid (laughs) happened and now they was like oh yeah you can come back to school and do your homework i was like quick cool and i'm listening to this 12th grade and i'm just like sitting there i'm like man like this guy's testimony really changed me so then when i started to see like um a lot of those people who actually had a born again experience and actually said his full name came to the lord jesus christ as their savior then i could start to distinguish between the gnostics and the actual truthers because now a lot of people are like well there's a new world order and then they ended with like oh you are your own savior you're your own Mm -hmm. salvation yeah we can save uh, ourselves yeah we can say we rise above and i'm like dude this is not no star wars where it's like we go we are the rebellion against the empire it's like this anti-authoritative this anti-god this anti-structure I was like, huh, that's interesting. (laughs) And that's totally what the right is trying to do. And they've roped all these Christians into doing it. Yep. So like the power's in your hands. You can do it. I'm not saying, because I know there's this verse, like I know it's in Ephesians um, 6.12. It says our weapons are not, they're all spiritual. We do Mm -hmm. not fight against flesh and blood, but we go against spiritual powers, spiritual principalities, the ones that are in the heavens. But we are not the ones that like let's say have the victory in the end it's christ who takes the victory in the end Mm -hmm. and just like putting that in our hands is like well now you're in this really this false you're you're you're, it's like what it's like the siths against the jedi it's like the dark magicians against the light magicians it's like harry potter it's like the same old trope and thing and then now they have you from above they're like you guys are just fighting each other and we all see it and that's why, you know, we have to be not of this world because Christ mm-hmm. calls us yeah, his kingdom, not this yeah. world. <laughs> it's interesting, too, because, I mean, it's easy to say things about the Bible or like mm-hmm. to listen to people say things about the Bible when you've never read it. And probably the people you're listening to have never read it. Right. And that's where a lot of these false ideas come from. And like taking things out of context, like mm-hmm. the kingdom of God is within and all of that. But when you start to actually read the Bible, it's not to use the word enlightening but like it is where you're like oh my gosh this is actually what it's saying it's so Mm -hmm. deep and so spiritual it's not the way that anyone has like explained it to me but i think it's so interesting that when jesus came the first time the jews were looking for a political savior from the romans 
-hmm. and people didn't accept Jesus because he was not that political savior. Like he wasn't the figure that they were looking for or that they wanted. And those people ended up rejecting Christ. And I feel like the whole world stage, just everything so political today, I feel like it's repeating that. It's like metaphorically, it's like the same exact thing over and over again. For some reason, it's funny how there's like always this archetype of this guy who's going to, you know, change everything. Because I know it was like Trump and there was like Andrew Tate that came out of nowhere in 2022. (laughs) And there was like, that's why there's discernment that has to have because some people may say, you know, yeah, like starting a family, going against having your own job, having be like masculinity's getting like, you know, attacked. It was, but it was like they're two sides of the same coin. It's like the result of like good and evil in a sense. Like they're giving you a solution, but they're still not on your side. So it's like you got to have discernment between these um idols. And then there's going to be like probably another one, then another one, then another one, then another one, another archetype of someone's going to quote unquote put this together. But it's like the Bible's like, no, Christ destroyed everything on the cross. Like, he is our savior. He's our redeemer. And also, like, trying to say this humbly, that's what makes me even more happy just to help people see that, too. Because a lot of people just don't know. They're, like, so blinded by this world. Absolutely blinded. How do you go about that? Like, do you just plant seeds? Do you not even go into it if people don't seem like they're, like, receptive? How do you go about it? Because I feel like I definitely struggle And Mm -hmm. like when people are not open to it, like I just have the hardest time even bringing it up because I feel like it'll like strain friendships or like people won't want to be around me because they know I'm going to say something about Jesus. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think there's two things. There was one, this even happened this week. So like a friend of mine, we were like chilling and one night he was like dealing with issues with his girlfriend. He was like, man, I can never find a good relationship that's fulfilling that we want to like do something i'm like dude the only way you could find true fulfillment is in jesus christ like the most blunt thing i said and then like he like for a second he paused right he was like he paused but it was like those moments and i think it's like those one-on-one interactions because what i learned about is like when you're let's say you're in the midst of like a ground like let's say all your old friends right and you are trying to tell them about the lord and then all of a sudden like no one's listening right but when it's like on an individual level unless you have another few of your friends who are, are in the truth to know about him then it helps out but i think it was like from a deeper intimate um way when i talk to people individually like seeing like how's your life going what are you going through and i just tell them like straight up front like the only fulfillment you will have is jesus christ and then also you know another good thing i wear a shirt too just like just so people can see like um yeah this is what i'm about (laughs) and then they see they're like huh that's interesting and then we like have a conversation but i think it's like a very steady flow of like you know telling people because before in 2021 i would literally when i meet someone new i'll be telling them about like did you know the nephilim and the giants and the blood drinkers vlad the impaler um the rothschilds and it was was like it was was just so much for them to bear but then yeah i realized i cannot do it on my own strength it is Christ who fills up that barrier. So then later on, they get into that. So yeah, I think when it comes to those interactions, I think it goes with a personal level. And then, you know, talking to them within their problems and then <laughs> boom, let it flow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I did have a struggle with that too. I feel like something else that also helps is like finding the people who are already a little bit conspiracy minded, but yes. are not saved yet. Yep. Because... <laughs> I mean, from my own experience, like before I accepted Jesus, I was looking into the child trafficking, the pizza mm-hmm. gate, um, like looking at Hillary Clinton's emails, like yeah. learning about she was asking about like Gilgamesh's body. So yeah. I started going into the giants and Nimrod and all this stuff and like realizing that the entire world is corrupt and evil is so dark. And like learning about all this stuff, like fractures your psyche a little bit because it's just nothing that you ever would have expected. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like most people expect that other people are good. Mm -hmm. And then to learn that people are actually genuinely evil Evil. is hard to like comprehend. But to be deep in those dark spaces and not have Jesus and you're trying to fix your own anxiety. And then you're a Gnostic. <laughs> you are the perfect yes. Gnostic. <laughs> right. right. And it doesn't even work. It, it mm-hmm. does not work. Like you will yeah. never find true peace because you will always be worried about right. the darkness of this world. Whereas with Jesus, it's like 
it doesn't even matter because he then already start, won. And then you start, you know, storing food, going into a bunker, like, you know, you're <laughs> yeah. secluding yourself, you're getting your rifles and your guns. And I'm like, do not fear the one that can kill your body, but fear the one that can destroy both your body. So, and it was like, the Lord is your provider. He's your protector. He's the one that has it all laid out for you. And it's just the thing for us to just submit to him, to be faithful to him. And it was just, yeah, but I, I get that. Like, that's um something with my friend as well, because he was very interested. And this also ties into um what I was about to share, too, um with my last internship last summer. Craziest thing. For some reason, they had morals and dogma in their like in their in their like weird shop. It was the most weirdest thing I've ever interacted with. What and was to this the day, internship? It was it was a place called Blue Dot. I want to do um design furniture and whatnot, but they had it on display for like you know interior design. And wow. then I pull it up and I'm like, "Do you guys know what this is?" And <laughs> they're like, "No." And then like I had it, and then the first few um the first thing I noticed is that they had a picture of a cross inside of the Morals and Dogma book. So it, it just blew my mind the fact that yeah that that happened last summer and it kind of scared it kind of spooked me out a little bit <laughs> well yeah you're like, like who are these people that i'm working for what yeah, am i I'm like it's I like it's know. on display like it's nothing and i'm like yes this is like the first thing i found in the book itself i'm That's like well cool. yeah that that was a weird interaction i don't know these books be following me everywhere i go but it was Did just you like, tell them what it was about that's the thing because that idea of like you know the freemasons is very vague to the common person like okay yeah, yeah that's the secret society because automatically illuminati is like oh okay he's a conspiracy theory nut he's right wing right. he's <laughs> all this junk so i was like you know what i told him about it a little bit but you know i didn't really give it out so then the um i forgot not my supervisor but someone who worked in the um the nonprofit organization was like yeah you can take the book just have it and i was like all right, then I'll take it there for research purposes. I know they worship Lucifer, but as a documentation, it's like <laughs> if I ever have kids or someone who comes along, I'm like, guys, look, when I was your age, this is what <laughs> like, you want to see my collection. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I just had to have it. But it have was you such read a weird... some of it? Yeah, I have. It was I took out a lot of points. On, I think it was page 321. It was about, you know, Albert Pike giving worship to Lucifer. And then it was like page 588 that was like you know um satan is like a force so then when i start to learn about star wars and what does the force means it was like oh interesting so when i was like really pulling off albert pike and i remember his letter to manzini about the third world war about initiating atheism and destroying christianity and like bringing more of a new world religion as to what this guy did this guy did but mm -hmm. yeah bring that into being so like only like take quotes in here and there to like confirm like okay that is what he's on even though lucifer loses at the end of the day <laughs> he doesn't win mm -hmm. <laughs> christ already won so yeah pretty much do you ever like when you're researching some of this stuff because i know that you'll like the morals and dogma thing it's like you're going to mm -hmm. the primary source learning about it so that you can expose yeah. it do you ever feel like it almost like like it infiltrates kind of like do you ever feel like it starts to darken you a little bit or like the mm -hmm. ideas start to like seep into your head like do you mm -hmm. struggle at all with that because I, I, I would love yeah. to do research like that too but like I'm almost afraid of getting too close into things yeah, yeah I think that's what happened um five months ago I had to take a really step back break and realizing like you know um all these books they're good but at the same time i just knew like god's word is the only thing that's very important at the end of the day so like for some if you have discernment to like know that because i'm good at doing what i do like i'll take out quotes make a video so then i have the documentation but i wouldn't recommend like not everyone do this at all but yes there could be some infiltration like that's why it's like you know cover your heart for the heart is the seat of all things. You can be very prideful in your own knowledge. So even as a Christian, I don't even, but this is the most dumbest like title, but a Gnostic Christian, there's no such thing as that. But yeah. you could kind of fall into that thing of like, I have all the knowledge. I'm stuck in my room. No one knows. And it's like, um, do you really want to live like that? Like, are you actually free in that? And it's like, nah. So yeah, I fell into that five months ago, but then now I'm actually reflecting. I'm like, 
nah, this is nothing, but it's just good to bring up in the conversations like this or when I make videos. Yeah. So yeah, it could be, it could be, I'll admit this, it could be a gateway for those who do not have the sermon to fall into that. So if you don't have like a very strong root of like relationship with Jesus or have a good biblical understanding, you will be deceived into some of these doctrines without knowing it. That's why a lot of people don't know about the full understanding of Gnosticism, even though it's a lie, but yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people too, who are really intrigued by the darkness and they want yeah. to expose it so badly for sure. People go into it before they really have that firm foundation of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's just not good. I feel like yeah. I kind of had my own experience with reading this book. It's called Transformation of America. And it was mm -hmm. written by Kathy O'Brien, who was an MK Ultra survivor. And the book just details like all the memories that she uncovered, um, like memories she yeah. was able to get back from her experiences. And so I was interested to know like who was involved, like how does it work and all this stuff. But some of the descriptions are so dark and like yeah. sexually perverse that it's like yeah. i definitely feel like that opened some kind of door and like those things are in my head now and i wish that i would yeah, never subconsciously it. and it's like funny because that's what um i'm gonna name these people like alistair crowley alice bailey helena, helena blavatsky manly p hall all these people had some type of spiritual guide guide them on what they're writing out to yeah. so even with what they're saying and i'm not gonna lie to you some of these books to be honest, they sound very like they don't get straight to the point. Like that's what like a lot of esoteric books, they're like the initiation process of the individual to reach his high. It's like, dude, get straight to the point. Like yeah. but you know, they're they're so they they do that. And I think that's what um I think a lot of Manly P. Hall and Alistair Crowley's books do too. They kind of ensnare that and it gets very dark. So it's like, nah, I don't need that. So interesting. <laughs> Well, yeah, I feel like we kind of at least have covered like a surface level of most of or maybe all the questions that we kind of had on that list. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like there's anything that you still want to say? I think one thing I do want to say is that John 14, 6, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. No mm -hmm. man comes to the father, but through him. Not through me, but through <laughs> but through him. But um, I think like last another one thing too. Um, with all this conspiracy thing and exposing the darkness and whatnot, and like I know recently as I was in my break, I noticed like you know the whole controversy with Doja Cat, these artists, or like you know the alien thing. And it's like at some point, or like all the movies being released, I'm like at some point they just keep on doing it over and over again. And I'm like. This is like a game to them. They keep on doing it, doing it. But then yeah. I realized the only thing that will still stay relevant for all of eternity is Christ himself. So mm -hmm. like, yeah, at the end of the day, even if like I collect like, you know, a lot of these books to like help me in my faith, I just know they're going to keep doing it. They're not going to stop. But that's why we have the most high with us. And right. yeah, yeah, that's the best thing. I actually do have... A couple of other like random questions yeah go right ahead have you ever been like attacked or accused like because i know that when people get a bigger following that like obviously trolls <laughs> and like some haters come along with that has that ever happened to you i say you know surprisingly not that many the reason why is because i tend to not like really be on i mean i do here and there be on social media as much but not really only things i'll get is like critiques and i think listening to critiques from some believers will be like man all you do is expose the darkness blah, 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 blah. where's jesus christ and then and i'm like understanding i'm like okay i get it that's why i had to take like a full break but then i yeah. think that's like the only critique but never to the extreme where it's like oh madison look she's throwing up this she's a <laughs> dude did you see all of that no i i was off the grid but i i think when you mentioned that when you mentioned that like yeah you're wearing a checkerboard outfit and they're like oh man there she is she's <laughs> i don't know i don't know how you can, how can you be a freemason but still acknowledge the full name of jesus christ as your lord and savior that that can never work unless you're just shooting yourself in the foot <laughs> what about people like kanye like because he does say question. like oh jesus is king but then it's like he's doing a satanic I, ritual i think it's the fruit it's the lifestyle 
you mm. got to see the lifestyle. Anyone can say Jesus Christ is Lord, but in their heart. Oh, no. I think this was a quote by um John Todd. It was in one of his tapes. It was one through six, but he was alluding to how there's a difference between someone saying like, you know, Jesus Christ is my savior. And we know that's a very good thing, too. But there's a difference when someone says like Jesus is like the Lord of my life, you know. Mm. So really seeing like a lot of these artists, you just got to see the fruit. And I don't want to like, you know, hit down on them making like huge accusations but like you know the whole testimony of black china when she supposedly came to the lord and i'm just sort of like reflecting on like certain posts that people do and like are they did they really have an inward transformation like did they really had that born again experience so i think it's just knowing about their fruit and seeing right. it constantly and do you think that like maybe it could be used as like marketing purposes oh yeah oh so yeah people are used as almost like <laughs> controlled opposition yeah. like yes. say they're christian and then do these types of things and maybe oh, other yes. christians will follow yes like i say especially within the new age conspiracy groups where they could acknowledge jesus but then they drift off into saying like he's some type of mystic or higher um ascended master or he was just trying to aspire to help you on this like what's her name um oprah for instance yeah like who had that type of like i think it was it the book called the secret um something but yeah i think people as many rituals as they do you think you could possibly believe they're far off gone they would just do that as well like because inwardly in the heart i don't think they truly truly believe in christ himself so right yeah yeah man gotta have the discernment and if we're not in our bibles discernment is <sighs> like it's not something that just comes naturally no. like discernment is hard Yep, it takes a lot of deep intimacy with prayer and time with the Lord, and he would just reveal it to you. Do yeah. you feel like like any of the conspiracy things that you had learned about that like led you to Christ in the first place? Mm -hmm. Do you look back at any of them and think that like maybe some of them were not true? Hmm, that is a really, really good question. Not saying I'm against FT, you know, flat at all, but um Hmm. I think somewhat. Like, cause I know there's like um. I know there was like the whole Disney thing, NASA thing, PizzaGate thing. I think it just has to fall in line with like the whole flat Earth part, which I'm like very open to. But I think when it comes to like you know, I noticed there was like a split. There's another YouTube channel called Truth is Stranger Than Fiction who tied into this in one of his videos. But it was like how they try to say like oh yeah all these uh, no 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 there's another guy i forgot his name i forgot his name eric dubé for instance right who would have this aspiring idea like you know the flat earth is like connected to the anatomy of the human body and all these ancient cultures not giving reverence to like oh yeah this points to the creator who could design everything but it's like it points back to us like we are the anatomy of solomon's temple we are the anatomy of mm. it's like it's all this self-worshipping thing but um honestly no to be honest no it's just when i kind of discern whether or not um certain information was given from a christian area or from some type of new age hypnotic like yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> area and then i'm like jumping off into all no it's okay no topics, but you mentioned solomon's you temple mm -hmm. and this is something that i asked um susan on one of my last podcasts yep, yep. is why if you have any insight because this is like, I feel like an area that I'm still trying to figure out myself. Mm -hmm. Do you have any insight on why the Freemasons and Luciferians in general are so obsessed with Solomon? Maybe it has to go with the Goetia and like the 72 seals of like Solomon and, and like how, like, <laughs> how he has such like an influence on the occult world after he fell. But it just, hmm. Because I'm not going to lie to you, I've not done that much research in depth with King Solomon's um, temple, but I know mm -hmm. for a fact they like really worship him a lot. Not when he was serving the Lord, but when he fell away from the Lord and started, right. you know, messing with strange women of different nations and start worshiping their gods. And I guess he's like not the Voldemort of their, <laughs> of their universe, <laughs> but it, like it's like they admire just the power of like magic and like, you know, making mm -hmm. up your own reality. And stuff but i know for a fact um i know probably alexandra tied into this in one of her videos about like the third temple being built whether or not it would be like a physical one or is it like your body and then like 
the enemy wants to be in the heart of your body because you are the temple of God. Yeah. So, so it, it might like, not be a physical temple in yeah, that's the actual where, place of Israel. Right. But then the temple that's us, those who are born again Christians for its sins right. and heart. But yeah, they're I just say they're very obsessed with like so much symbolism and this this hidden mystery religion that no one else knows about because they're the enlightened ones and they're mm-hmm. at the top. So it's like deluding themselves to believing that they are their own gods. And I like how in Proverbs it says, there's a way that seemeth right to a man but at the end is death so it's like mm-hmm. yeah but with the whole like in depth like why and like who and where and when yeah i need to go further deep in the, into that right and so do you have any ideas or thoughts on like the way that you personally might think kind of like the end of days might play out like where do you think that world events are going to go from here maybe like even how much time do you think there might be left Mm kind of things like that like how do you see things playing out i think things are like just playing out with like a lot of these like miniature like let's say geomantria games in the sense like okay the next celebrity does this the next celebrity does that another pop artist exposed no not exposes but mocks christ like all these little branches of thing or maybe like another geomantria like global event happens i don't know not saying this will happen like let's say like the golden gate bridge gets like destroyed or something <laughs> or like because it has oh man it has the two pillars it has the two beams it yeah the gate cut it in half it's a tower it's like the two towers in um the 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 9 11 like i think from here on out when it comes to like biblical prophecy it it's kind of i'm kind of like drifting in two different areas because right now either it's like you know Christ cannot come un- unless like the whole world knows about the gospel itself or like these guys are just going to keep on playing it out, keep deceiving more people, more and more people. But I think like from here on out, it's just like living the genuine church life in Christ Jesus and bringing more people to Jesus Christ as much as possible. But as mm-hmm. for global events, I'm still in the gray area of it, you know, about like, oh, is this guy to be the Antichrist? Is this guy going to rapture? Even though I'm not in yeah i'm not part of that yeah. <laughs> that's a whole different topic I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah 2028 20, that's gonna it's like mm, mm, no <laughs> yeah, yeah there's a lot of people trying to predict dates lately I'm like oh uh, because i think haven't you um done i think you've done research into like the origins of the whole rapture idea but yeah no right now i'm just in the gray area and just like living for the lord and seeing where he takes me yeah and, like yeah yeah because it is but that's a great question yeah and even like the first time that christ came there were all the prophecies and still Mm -hmm. even with those prophecies it played out in a way that like people didn't really recognize it so i just feel like Mm -hmm. with the end of times things like even the mark of the beast that could happen in such a weird out of the box way that we don't even conceive of right now that yeah i just feel like everyone's trying to like point fingers or like say it will be this or it will be this and then Christians fight each other about these ideas. And it's like, we don't really know anyone there. Why are we fighting each other? Right. And I mean, I think like when COVID-19 happened with the whole like, you know, jab thing and people make assumption or trying to put not really relevant. So it's like, um, that's when I'm like, I can't do that. I can't make um claims on whether or not that's going to be that or this is going to be that after that whole situation. Because I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's so weird how within unfortunately within um the body of christ there can be some type of um drifting where we start to debate whether or not you know the rapture is going to happen is it going to be pre-trib is it going to be post-trib oh snap is it yeah. oneness or is it trendy oh snap um is trump going to be the savior is he trying to destroy the deep state and it's like why can't we just keep our eyes on christ like yeah. like we're sinking like peter like why can't we just <laughs> <laughs> it's like always like that like do what you're called to do but at the same time it's like when the body of christ is like going against each other and not focusing on what christ calls each and every one of us to do because i don't know what everyone else is going through mm-hmm. but like yeah that's when things can get very confusing and also the enemy can use that within his own pub propaganda to like kind of make jokes at us like the whole doja cat thing they probably like were laughing about that they're like yep look at these guys posting more about this huh yeah let's do this with Lil Nas X hey Lil Nas X wear this have this bible yeah. right <laughs> well yeah. it's annoying too because the yeah. Christians are so obsessed with it and like I'm guilty I post about yeah, I'm it guilty, yeah. <laughs> but we give them so much free marketing mm-hmm. that I'm like bugged by it 
Because it's like, if we just shut up, like, obviously, we know that they are doing these satanic things. We know they're going to keep, like, playing with everyone's feelings, making fun of Christians. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to keep pointing it out? Like, we've made our point. Why do we keep sharing their music and, like, showing their music videos and all of this stuff? It's like, can we just stop? Right. And just, like, have not that being the sole thing that we're doing, you know? Yes. And I think also when it came to the Barbie movie, because like I said, I'm guilty of this. I did just <laughs> I did just post <laughs> something about it, but like just explain how a lot of things have its own Gnostic ideas. But I know there might be other channels that do expose it, but then they don't give a solution. Like there's a problem, but there's no mm-hmm. solution afterwards. And that's something I dealt with deeply in 2021 and 2022 was like i was exposing so much but i didn't really give a solution for the soul like i didn't give a solution as to okay what do you do day-to-day life after you're off the internet and you're not doing nothing like what's your life like and that it's like oh i mean i've i go to school i have two kids you know i work (laughs) like where's your life outside of when no one's looking at you because we can all like have our own type of like mask and characteristics and whatnot but like what's like our personal hidden life that no one knows about and that's when it's like you know what that hidden life is in Christ. Still show it on the internet, but, but you know, yeah, yeah, that can't just be all that is. Totally. Mm-hmm. Well said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie. This is like my first um podcast discussion, but I know it needed to happen. Like, I really want to share this deeply because I know all this is not done in vain. And from the moment when I um came to Lord when I was 13 and up until now, because I'm currently 20. That's like seven years. Within that seven year frame, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about the mystery religions. I learned about, about a lot about the Freemasons, the occult, and like how all of it is just pulling you, us and humanity away from our true creator. Mm. And now I'm just like really I'm at a place where I'm like just at peace with the Lord. And I'm like, Yeah. He's like, dude, I've been here the entire time, man. <laughs> I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I've been trying to tell you this like <laughs> from the start, but he he brings us in so many different directions and he brings us back to the same destination. So that's one thing I'm like, he works in so many mysterious ways. Yeah. His mm-hmm. ways are higher than our ways and we will never really truly understand what nah. he's doing. <laughs> no, 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 no. But well, yeah, cool. any more yeah, any more questions and then if you wanna cut off, then we can too. Um, well, yeah, I guess my last question. First, I just want to say that I'm honored that you wanted to come on my podcast as your first podcast um yeah why why this podcast like why did you choose this as the way to break your little silence <laughs> i think it was from the previous podcast you did an interview um i forgot her name but you were talking susan. She does, yeah susan susan <laughs> i was just because i was in class like i was literally in my 2d design class i was listening to this and then you guys were talking about saturn and i i could have said so many things at <laughs> once but it just i loved it so much because i can relate so well yeah and like with the work that we all do when it comes to like posting and editing and all this stuff i just felt like i needed to get this out from like all that research from all like so that people may know and that like i'm just not saying to dial down my story but like i'm no different than any other testimony and hopefully this is an inspiration to someone else too mm-hmm. in the world <laughs> so i mean it definitely like, will be oh yeah so it's a journey but like i said if it weren't for um me and my friend david 2019 in science class almost making our teacher extremely mad that we were bringing up like your favorite celebrity does <laughs> it was it was so it was so funny because a lot of our friends did not like us at all and then we started to drop those like revelations like you know this is gonna happen in the end days and i'm like like shut up dude like don't yeah we bro we, we were we were really really like we still are we're both still in school but like we were on some like i don't know trying to unlock everything go to all these freemason lodges and we actually talked to a few of them and then when we brought the name of jesus they were like "Mm, uh, yeah don't don't talk about that they showed us the pentagram floor they showed us the pillars they showed us the dome of the firmament they showed us like they had their own quran satanic bible um morals and dogma they had the the cube in the middle of the checkerboard situated it it was and i was i think he was 18 i was 17 at the time so it was just that's like, wild we were we were nerds <laughs> we loved it so like, it just happened and then 
oh wait one last thing one last thing i know we have one minute left but yeah i remember <laughs> i used to go around showing people this dollar and i was showing them all the symbolism about the 13 berries the 13 rows um a norse older the chlorum the new world order and i was showing them yeah. like the owl and i was connecting them it doesn't really say in god we trust what god do they trust i was in that so i love <laughs> yeah. it i love it no the guy one of the guys that his testimony helped me get saved I met him and we like walked on the beach in Florida and just like talked about our experiences. But we saw this guy that was like drunk on the beach. It was at nighttime. He was just yeah. by himself. And we just went and talked to him like, hey, man, how are you? And he was like, not good. And I think somehow it turned into like showing him the stuff on the dollar. And it was like, you got to put your trust in God and all this stuff. It's like <laughs> it, it is a good way to like connect with people by showing them like, do you know this is on the money you use every yeah. day? Yeah. Um, but okay, yeah, we have less than a minute left. Tell people where they can connect with you, um, if you have like any projects or anything. Yeah, Z Zavasti um Instagram. And last but not least, uh I post a lot of my art on my personal page. So this is like the Garden of Eden um thing. So now when I do the personal art, I just draw a bunch of biblical scenes so people can know the truth as well. So mm -hmm. that's what I like to do. But yeah, awesome. <laughs> Zavasti. <laughs> Zavasti, yeah. And I'll link all of this in the show notes. I'll even try and link um, the books and the authors and everything. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank um, you very I much. I know you've got so much to say, so I would love to even do a second one sometime. Sorry it cut out, guys. Zoom just can't even handle our excitement. Um, I have the Zoom option that only lets us record for 40 minute little bursts. So that's why there's random jumps and cuts. But yeah, I'm going to have his Instagram linked in the show notes. I'm going to try and link all of the books and the authors that he shared. Thank you guys so much for listening. If this blessed you, share this with a friend or a family member. Share this to your Instagram story. And also feel free to reach out to either me or him you know let us know if this blessed you or what you thought clearly we both are so excited and have so much to say um i'm sure we'll end up doing another podcast episode sometime so if you have anything in specific that you want us to dive deeper into or anything you want to learn more about just let us know and we will totally make it happen so thank you guys for being here thanks for listening i want to thank him also for just coming on my podcast it's an honor to me you know i've been following him for a couple of years now really love his stuff and it just is awesome to be chosen as the platform to break his you know social media silence and to finally do his first podcast so i'm just glad that these doors are opening and i'm so grateful to god for bringing these people together and you know helping me build these friendships with people who otherwise would just be you know online faces that I don't really know. So it's awesome to see just the human behind these things and to hear their story. Thank you so much for being here and for listening. I am absolutely honored to be doing this every single time. Love you all. God be with you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is it for this podcast. Love you guys. God bless. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Final Wake Up. I hope this episode sparked a flame in you to march forward in your journey for truth, health, happiness, and meaning. If you want to dive even deeper down the rabbit hole, go to my Instagram at madison.polika. There, I have so many highlights dedicated to spreading even more information and value. You can also join the club with my email list, linked in my bio, to stay up to date on all the latest news, sales, and new offerings. Or if you want to talk to me personally, please send me a DM. I would love to hear from you. If you love this episode, please subscribe, rate, and leave an amazing review. Bonus points if you share this to your story and write what you learned. Tag me in it so that I can connect and see how this has actually helped you. If you know somebody who would really appreciate this, or somebody who desperately needs to hear what I talked about in this episode, please send this to them. Together, we can bring light to this world full of confusion and help people thrive. Thank you and see you next time.